Scott Desjardins is our guest right now, folks. Fourth district in the great state of Tennessee. The speaker fight. Uh, it is over. We have arguably, I would consider, a conservative as as a speaker in Mike Johnson. Uh, 30,000 feet up, Congressman. What, what What's your takeaway from the last three weeks? Well, first of all, what happened to Kevin McCarthy should have never happened. Uh, the 96% of the conference was happy we were doing appropriation bills. We should have had them done earlier. There was no excuse to be running late. But nonetheless, the system uh, should not be set up to where a few people with perhaps personal issues, in, in my opinion, with uh, Matt Gates and Kevin McCarthy could uh, paralyze us the way we did. So we've, we've got to look at our rules and uh, prevent this from happening again. But um, when when Kevin was out and we had to start looking again, obviously Steve Scalise was not there very long. Uh, great guy. We all like him. Not sure he would have been much different than Kevin. Those of us who were more on the conservative side were pretty thrilled about the idea of Jim Jordan being speaker. But there was people on the other side of the spectrum that didn't like him. And to be honest, I had a talk with my chief of staff, and I said I think Mike Johnson would be the next best uh, speaker option outside of Jim Jordan. So I, I personally was thrilled to have him. Uh, Mike is a thoughtful guy. He's articulate. He, you don't see him in the news a lot. When he opens his mouth, he usually has something to say. And I think uh, if you listen to his acceptance speech yesterday, you could kind of uh, understand that tone and tenor from him. So yep. I, I like uh, that he's there. I think he's got a heck of a tough job ahead of him and uh, probably won't know what hit him here in about a week. True, true enough. And, of course, judging by the way the left wing is reacting to him, they can't stand that he's God-centered. They can't stand that he's intelligent. They can't stand that he has a core and conviction, which is why they have come out so universally uh, with just all manner of hate on social media toward Speaker Mike Johnson. Let me talk to you about the politics of all this because you brought up Matt Gates. And look, Congressman, I'm just going to say as a conservative, I believe what Matt Gates and the other the six other conservatives and Nancy Mace, because I don't know what to make of Nancy Mace, to be honest with you. Right. Uh, I, look, this this aspect of the Republican Party, and you already made allusion to it. You've got people who are on the conservative side and others on the other side of the spectrum. An alleged conservative party shouldn't have a other side of the spectrum, but it does. And that seems to me to be the big issue here, politically speaking, that the Republican Party has been punting, has been papering over these significant differences inside of the conference and not having it out. And what what Congressman Gates did was say, look, we've got to decide what kind of party we're going to be. And granted, it's never going to be a good time, but. I mean, do, doesn't that come to Jesus moment have to happen inside the Republican Party if it's going to move forward as a viable, legitimate national party? Right. And and can we exist as a two party system anymore? If you, if you want to dig a little deeper well, on the left, you've got the you know, you, there's the argument of the tail wagging the dog. Now we have the tip of the tail wagging the dog from both ends of the political spectrum. So a lot of countries have adopted multi party systems. And in our case, yes, we have Republicans that are far right. And we have Republicans that are moderate or in the middle from swing states. Unfortunately, you, you don't have the majority in this country in a party unless you have those swing state members who vote differently than we do in Texas and Tennessee. And so you've got to find a sweet spot there where you can pass legislation that is mostly conservative, but taking into account that to keep the majority, you have to please people who uh, come from areas where uh, either the, the margin of Republican to Democrat thought processes aren't the same or, you know, they're just simply uh, structured differently. So it, it is a, it is a fine line where you can keep a keep a conference together and united. But uh, you need to lay out those parameters before you go to the floor and, and know that when you take legislation there, it's going to pass. You know, and a lot of this is is the biased press and left wing media driven. But. I do know that there are schisms inside the Democrat Party, but when push comes to shove, they are all united on the, the Democrat, socialist, communist side. Destruction of our rights, destruction of our liberties, destruction of our Constitution, the promotion of crime, whether it be at the border, whether it be in our streets. They are united. No, no matter where you go, you can't find a Democrat condemning another Democrat by name. You won't find it. On the Republican side, because, and this is my rationale, you, you can feel free to disagree with me, Congressman, but on the Republican side, there, are, there is not one unifying principle 
that I've been able to identify that every Republican says, you know what, this is what we're going, this, this is what we're going to move heaven and earth to implement as law. Isn't that the problem? No, I think I think that's true. I think the Democrats have the ability to unite, and uh, Republicans or conservatives are, are stubborn in their principles, and I think that the person shouldn't compromise the principles, but they've got to be willing to adjust their strategy. Right, right. And again, there has to be a unifying principle that says, this is what a Republican is. It used to be conservatism. Sadly, it, that's not the case anymore. Congressman Scott Desjardins, the 4th District of Tennessee, is our guest right now. Let's Let's talk about Look, we, we've. I think this is all part and parcel, all of these issues. The open border where 8 million illegal alien military-age men have, mostly military-age men, have gained access to the United States. Uh, we played a soundbite earlier from Senator Kennedy where he got some uh, Biden regime officials up in front of him. He's asking them, so uh, how many are, uh, do we know are still here? How many of them got in? They, these people have no idea, nor congressmen, do they care that they have let in the same caliber of individuals who stormed the Israeli border and, and slaughtered 1,300 plus of their citizens. So you've got that. You've got the war in Israel that the, the Biden regime wants to, to fund both sides of the equation. You've got Ukraine. There are some serious issues out there. And doesn't the Republican Party need to start introducing some sanity back into the national and international conversation? For those who watched the, the the difference between the two speeches when Hakeem Jeffries got up there and did whatever the heck it was that he was doing while he was supposed to be introducing the new speaker and what Mike Johnson talked about on the floor, when we talked about issues uh, that were uniting, like helping our allies uh, in Israel or uh, you know other things of that sort. The border was brought up multiple times by Mike Johnson, and uh, there was a standing ovation <clears throat> from the Republican side, and there was absolute crickets uh, from the Democratic side, even when talking about our children uh, dying of fentanyl and uh, you know, the border being overrun with the uh, uh, you know, terrorists crossing into our country that we know and that we're tracking. The Democrats sat in their seat and didn't even acknowledge the border as a problem. And it was just astounding to me to see that when we know that the uh, mayors of sanctuary cities have seen the light now as soon as it became their problem. So the border is like the quintessential problem of our time. We're worrying about borders in Ukraine. We're worried about borders in Israel. But yet we are literally being overrun to the point of we don't even know a count anymore. Six million, seven million, eight million people. People are coming into our country illegally. Not necessarily all bad people, but people are breaking rules, breaking laws, and the Biden administration, the Democrats, are looking the other way as we're watching our country just be systematically destroyed. And we, we can't fund our own government. We're $33 trillion in debt, and yet every individual that crosses the border is estimated to cost the average taxpayer up to $80,000 a year. Extrapolate that times $7 million or $8 million. And uh, the, the math is pretty mind-boggling. We just watched a, a lone gunman put terror into to citizens of Maine, killing 22 at least. That's the, the body count at this point uh, uh, during our interview, Congressman. So imagine, I, I, I'm going to assume, Congressman, that out of 8 million mostly military-age men, that you're not comfortable telling the American people that absolutely no terrorists, no foreign military, no narco terrorists, no bloodthirsty criminals are part of that eight million. You're not going to go on the record and say the number is zero, are you? Uh, no, we're not safe. We're tracking hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, armed services. We have a lot of classified briefings, and I'll tell you, we are very concerned that uh, what happened in Israel, uh, you know, the the. Uh, Killing in Maine, we don't know what the motive. You know, this guy obviously had mental issues. But uh, if America wakes up shocked some morning that somebody who crossed the border illegal uh, belongs to a terrorist cell, whether it's from Afghanistan or the Middle East, right. does the same thing, uh, you know, they've had their head in the sand. Well, yeah. And, and speaking of having their head someplace, let's talk about the, your Democrat <laughs> colleagues, because your Democrat colleagues seem to be operating on the premise, at least publicly, that... Absolutely no bad actors have come across that border, uh, even among the three million known gotaways into this country that didn't check in, quote unquote, with uh, and get their permiso to appear in court. So their contention seems to be there's no danger here whatsoever. Of course, 
that doesn't pass the smell test. What do your colleagues, your Democrat colleagues, tell you in private? Are, do they at all care about their voters? Do they at all care about this country that we could see hundreds, thousands of mains replicated all over this country in various cities, courtesy of the people the Democrat Party have allowed to gain access to our country? A few of the Democrats that live on border states will acknowledge this, that it's interesting that nobody wants to talk about it. It's just one of those things that you said, Dan. Democrats unite. They get behind President Biden's open border plan. It's, it's clearly a strategy to uh, increase Democratic voters or, or bring down the system. I don't know which it is. But, uh, yeah, the, the sheer numbers that are coming in, um, you, you know that there's – Bad people involved, people that have uh, been involved in sex tra- trafficking, drug trafficking, and uh, it, it's undeniable that it's happened. So for the Democrats to be able to look away from that and pretend it, it doesn't happen. And as you mentioned, the gotaways, why are they gotaways? People know the system right now. If you set foot in America and you're under 18, you're, you're automatically qualified for the SNAP program, education, all kinds of benefits. And if you're not that, then you say you're an asylum seeker and you start the process of getting qualification for all yep. those things. So if you're a gotaway, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that on purpose. You're doing it because you have ulterior motives. You're probably part of a crime family because if you, the quickest pathway to, to getting benefits in the United States is to be 18 or under or to seek asylum. Anyone that's doing it otherwise, uh, we, we need to be watching out for Correct. And I, and I would say that foreign enemies and adversaries are not as stupid as the Biden regime is. I would be I, I would not be shocked that China, Mother Russia, Iran have sent military operatives or trained operatives across that open porous border to be activated or do harm in a future time. How many? We don't know. But I do know the Democrat Party. Uh, has uh, has no concern about what type of carnage and damage will be done to our people. But also, Congressman, I know that for all the Republicans caterwauling, not one of those people have been stopped from entering this country. So that's and, that. And let me add one other thing to be on the lookout for, too. We've heard uh, President Biden has this $100 billion plan to give aid to Israel, to give aid to Ukraine. And, oh, by the way, there's border money in there. Now I think it went to 105 billion or 106. I think the Senate's about ready to jam that on the House. Thank God we're up and functioning again. But you know, Trump wanted 10 billion to build the wall and couldn't get that money. Biden's ready to send 60 billion more to Ukraine to help secure their borders and work in their war effort. He's got 10 billion set aside for Israel. There's supposed to be border money in there, but if you look at it, it's more for uh, extra attorneys to adjudicate the <laughs> asylum seekers. Yeah. And to give more money to sanctuary cities to put illegals up in hotels and feed them. It's not for border security. So right. I'm glad that we're, we're functioning again and we'll be ready when that comes our way to break it down for the American people to hey. see what the president's wanting to spend their tax money on. And Congressman, I want to give you some caution. You might want to step aside because as Joe Biden wants to spend more money to facilitate more illegal immigration into the United States, Mitch McConnell and John Cornyn and uh, other Senate Republicans will trip all over themselves to sign that check the way they did in in that disgraceful omnibus. Congressman Scott Desjardins, 4th District, Tennessee. Sir, I appreciate the time. Chris, thanks for having me.